The staging of this month's Summer Olympics was dealt a fresh setback today when the host city Tokyo was placed under a new state of emergency which will last for the duration of the Games. The Japanese government says the city is facing a race between coronavirus vaccinations and the spread of the Delta variant. The more infectious strain of COVID-19 now accounts for around a third of the cases. Olympic organizers are also meeting today to decide if up to 10,000 spectators will be allowed inside Games venues. If they they decide it is impossible, it will be the first Olympic Games ever to be hosted behind closed doors. Olympic delegations from around the world have been arriving in the city. Here you can see the British canoeing team arriving earlier today. They must have a COVID test when they arrive at the airport and have taken two tests in the four days before departure. The International Olympic Committee President Thomas Bach also arrived at his hotel in Tokyo a few hours ago. He'll spend three days in quarantine. A short time ago, the Japanese Prime Minister said strong steps are necessary to prevent another COVID-19 outbreak in Japan and spoke of the strict controls that people coming to the Games are subject to. It is two weeks up until Olympic Games. It is going to be very unusual circumstance. The uh, athletes uh, from overseas and the stakeholders are arriving. And before the entry, two tests. And at the immigration, and also after the immigration, the athletes are being tested every day so that inflow of the virus to Japan is uh, prevented. That was the Japanese Prime Minister speaking a little earlier. Well, let's go to Tokyo now and speak to the BBC's Mariko Oi. Uh, Mariko, this obviously, as the Prime Minister said, are unusual circumstances, but what does this state of emergency actually mean? Well, it basically means that people in Tokyo are encouraged not to go out. But you have to remember that this is not like a strict lockdown that you had in the UK. The Japanese government doesn't have the constitutional power to impose a strict lockdown like that. So even if you go out, there's no penalty. And as you can imagine, by the fourth time, people are getting uh, somewhat used to this idea of the state of emergency. So even my own friends were saying, oh, yeah, I guess we can't go out. So how effective it will be remains to be seen, but the government will be asking restaurants and bars not to serve any alcohol. Uh, department stores will be asked to close early, and this move will have quite a, will face quite a lot of uh, strong opposition from those businesses because they say that it has a devastating impact on them, uh, while it has very limited impact on controlling the pandemic. But from the government's point of view, they were very concerned that if people start going to uh, watch some competitions in the stadiums and end up uh, going to a bar and getting a bit drunk, uh, that could lead to a higher number of new COVID-19 infections. And that's why uh, they've decided to declare this fourth state of emergency. As you said, uh, the organizers and the government are having a meeting as we speak to decide whether to allow any spectators, spectators inside the stadiums. Uh, we'll probably find out the decision tomorrow. And Mariko, uh, just briefly, what does this mean uh, for sponsors? Well, sponsors have spent a lot of money. This is by far the most heavily sponsored Olympics ever. Uh, Japanese companies really spent a lot of money. Uh, but when I tried to contact them for the last few months, uh, they've really declined to talk to us because, uh, I guess, because of the strong opposition to the Games, it's almost become a, a public relations nightmare and they prefer to stay silent. Uh, but we are starting to hear some frustration and some sponsors uh, starting to cancel some promotion because who do you hold this uh, promotional events for uh, when spectators are not allowed and some of them downscaling as well. Mariko, thank you so much for that update there from Tokyo. Well, I'm joined now by David Priles, the chief executive of the Softball Australia team, whose teams are facing daily checks in Japan since arriving last June. David, thanks very much for joining us here on the program. Just give us a sense of what it actually has been like for you and your team there in Tokyo. Oh, it's been very stringent uh, in Japan. As you said, we've been there for five weeks and we take our responsibility um, or we take on the responsibility, uh, not lightly. Uh, we have daily temperature testing, daily PCR testing. Uh, we wear our masks uh, at all times, even when we're training and playing, and the girls are in really good spirits. Well, tell us uh, your reaction to this state of emergency and the fact that, frankly, there may not be any spectators. 
Oh, it's a shame for the Japanese people, really, that uh, uh, oh, and it's unfortunate there's no spectators. Uh, we've got a job to do. We take um, we take our uh, what the AOC, which is the Australian Olympic Committee and the International Olympic Committee, um, we take what they say um, on board, and they keep telling us that there's going to be an Olympic Games in a couple of weeks' time. So we have to best prepare to uh, to get the girls out on the diamond and and, and win a medal. What has the mood been like for the team? I mean, are they demoralised by the fact that this is unlike any other Olympic Games? Yeah, the, the girls are very upbeat. I'm very proud of them. As I said, it, it's just a way of life. Uh, now when they wake up at breakfast time, they have their daily uh, temperature testing and daily PCR testing. Um, they're training really hard. They're getting together. Um, I'm speaking to them on a daily basis. Uh, we selected the 15 girls last week, so... Um, they're on top of the world and they just can't wait to get out there and play. I, I suppose for, for, for so many of these young athletes, they spend their entire childhood, so many hours of, of training for an event like this. Uh, and they probably never thought that it would be the way that it currently is. Oh, it's certainly been a different uh, Olympic Games build-up. Uh, we knew we qualified back in September 2019. So, um, you know, it was a blow last year when um, we had to wait an extra 12 months, but uh, they're very determined. Uh, we haven't been in the Olympic cycle since 2012 and we won't be in the next one. So um, as the Australian Olympic Oath um, states, once an Olympian, all, uh, always an Olympian. So this is a very special time for them. Do you, do you sort of wish that perhaps it was postponed again uh, when there was more certainty? Oh, I don't think it can be postponed again, really. Um, that's what we've been told. As I said, we take direction from um, the International Olympic Committee. Um, and whilst they say the Olympic Games are on, um, we don't take it lightly. It's, it's a huge honour to be there, firstly. Um, we respect the Japanese people uh, and the laws. And we're there and, and we want to win a medal. And, and that's something that the girls can hold on to for the rest of their lives. OK, well, as an Aussie, I just want to say good luck to you, David, and the team. Thanks very much. Thank you. <laughs>